welcome to my classroom in this fuel cells and batteries course we have been discussing about thermodynamics of fuel cells and we have seen the basic concept of thermochemistry involved in these calculations right so we are going to discuss about the effect of temperature on these thermochemical terms like cp value delta s value delta h value and we will solve numericals to determine the efficiency of fuel cells or energy loss in the fuel cell okay ready well <clears throat> in the previous lecture we have stopped with this table right i hope you have written the notes in your notebook so we have ta made a table for the values standard values for hydrogen oxygen water in liquid phase and water in gaseous phase and i ask you to fill it for methane and methanol okay so i hope you have filled that one so we will solve a numerical calculate the entropy for hydrogen oxygen fuel cell okay entropy can we determine the entropy if water is in liquid state the product formed the water formed is in liquid phase calculate the entropy and also energy loss due to entropy calculate the entropy calculate the energy loss due to entropy okay and how how much energy is converted into el electrical energy how much energy is so how much energy is converted into electrical energy all these can be calculated once we refer to the previous table okay so in the table we have the data we will substitute to get that one okay so what is the reaction taking place please write h2 plus of o2 giving h2o so this is the solution okay so how to determine the entropy delta s equal to s of products minus s of reactants okay so what is the s of product it is s of water minus s of h2 minus half into s of oxygen this is 1 into this is 1 into okay now we from this one we have the s values so s of the product is point what is the product okay this water sorry so this is water we are considering the first problem problem one that is we are going to consider this so 0.061 is the s of water and this is s of hydrogen this is s of oxygen okay now 0.06996 minus 1 into 0.205 sorry this is half no minus half into 0.2051 minus 1 into 0.13066 will give us the value of delta s okay please comment your answer what is the value okay put it in your chat box or in your comment section please paste your value with the units what is the unit of delta s for unit refer to the table okay so in this table i have given you the unit of entropy kilojoules per gram mol kelvin so what is the value it is write that one okay so that is 0.0699 minus point zero six nine nine six minus point one three zero six six minus half into point two zero five one seven gives us the value of delta s okay So please comment your value. So if you are watching this video, you will be commenting here. Okay.
Now, once you have the delta S value, what is the energy loss due to entropy? Is equal to T delta S. What is the temperature? Twenty five degrees Celsius. This is two ninety eight Kelvin. So two ninety eight into the value which you have calculated. Please substitute here to get here. So that is the energy lost as in the form of heat. Okay, energy lost due to entropy in the form of heat. Okay. So that is your energy loss due to entropy now what is the amount of energy converted to electric energy so the electrical energy produced is given by delta g which is equal to delta h minus t delta s okay if delta h value is known you will substitute okay delta h value in kilojoules per gram mole when water is formed we you know what is the delta h value it is 286 kilojoules we have seen in the table earlier okay minus t delta s value we have calculated here so whatever is value let it be b you substitute by b you will get the final answer c okay so that is your c Kilo joule per gram mole. Okay, so comment your values of A, B, and C. A equal to this, B equal to this, C equal to this. Okay. Where I have taken that value of two eighty six is a thing. So delta H value of how I got, if you ask me, delta H value is equal to delta heat of sorry H of formation of product minus heat of formation of reactants. So in our case, the both reactants are pure elements, so we get zero heat of formation of pure element zero. So we get this as two eighty six. Okay. Okay, so that what we are substituting here. I repeat, first we find the delta S value. Okay, so this is the first step. So first step is delta S value determination. We calculate delta S value, and that is our A value. Comment your answers. Okay, A, B, and C. So delta S we determine. Then we determine the energy loss due to entropy. Then we determine electrical energy produced. Okay, so that is our C value. Okay, so this B value determined here, we will be substituting here to get the value of C. So finally, we will comment A, B, and C value. Report in your notebook also. Okay, now we will solve another numerical. Another numerical. Same numerical, please repeat. When water is in. Vapor phase. Same problem we will solve with when the water is in vapor phase. What is the difference here? We use the data of the liquid here. Okay, numerical one we use this data. For numerical two, we'll use this value. Delta H value will change. Okay, 
and this entropy value we will make use of this as the s water of vapor so this is for water is in liquid phase for vapor we will make use of these data and please submit your answers okay so this answer you will substitute d e f so please comment your values of d e and f where d is your your delta s value e is the energy lost in the form of heat okay this is the electrical energy done okay so these three values please comment i hope you are able to practice it and submit it okay now we'll continue to solve another numerical here take down this an approximate equation of cp value that is in calories per gram mole kelvin of gaseous hcl is given by cp is equal to a plus pt where a is 6.6 and b is 0.96 into 10 power minus 3 okay calculate the heat required to raise the temperature of 1 gram mole of gas from 100 degree celsius to 200 degree celsius so how will you solve this problem simple the solution is we have number of moles is given m equal to 1 gram mole we know that dq equal to mcp delta t right Remember, Cp as a function of temperature is given. Right? So we should able to do integration. Okay. So if we write dQ equal to mcp dt, and the temperature range is T1 equal to 100 degrees Celsius, T2 equal to 200 degrees Celsius. Remember, here it should be mentioned whether T is in which temperature. Where A, B is this, and T is in kelvins remember always absolute temperature is used in thermodynamic equations okay so t is in kelvin so that means that t1 equal to 373 kelvin and t2 is equal to 473 kelvin okay so can you get what is the dq value so we have dq equal to m integral cp dt we take integral on the left hand side we get q m is 1 gram mole so we get 1 into integral of 373 kelvin to 473 kelvin into a plus bt into dt simple integration a into dt is t b in bt dt is T square by two, so we are going to have two terms where Q is equal to a plus b a t plus b into T square by two, with upper limit and lower limit three seventy three Kelvin to 
ಆನ್ಸರ್ ಇನ್ calories okay so let me write this answer is h so you will be commenting the value of h with the units in calories how much calorie please report in the comment section okay so simple calculation so this is only recalling what we have learnt in your second year of ug process calculation course okay so since it's a big gap between that and this course we are just doing a model example okay see whenever that uh, when delta h of the reaction what we got is minus 286 minus 0 minus 0 okay so finally we got minus 286 kilojoule per mole so this minus sign represents that heat is released and that means what it is an exothermic reactions okay so that is what happens when we write so that's why we wrote h2 plus o2 will form h2o plus 286 kilojoule per mole the heat is liberated here we write with plus when we get delta h value negative okay we take down another problem keeping this in mind the following enthalpy changes the numerical four the following enthalpy changes are known from the experiments for the reactions given below at 25 degree celsius calculate the standard heat of formation calculate the standard heat of formation of propylene that is c3 h6 remember how why got a lean means we know that cn h2n plus 2 is alkanes okay when we have cn h2n it is enes alkanes okay Similarly, when you have CN, H2N minus 2, it is ions. Okay? So, we have propylene here. And similarly, we have forgot that if it is 1, we call it as meth. 2 means eth. 3 means prop. 4 means but. So, methanol. ethanol propanol butanol like that we name the hydrocarbon like that okay alcohols 
alkanes hydrocarbons all that are named in this fashion okay so propylene even if it is not given you should know that e means chn2n so that is c3h6 is the thing okay so that way we have to identify the formula okay so the data given are a is a reaction c3h6 which is in gaseous phase plus h2 gaseous phase gives c3h8 in gaseous phase so we have delta h value in kilo calorie per gram mole value is minus 29.6 then we have p reaction c3h8 in gas phase plus 5 oxygen in gas phase forming 3 co2 in gas phase plus 4h2o again which is in liquid phase value of delta h is minus 530.6 then we have h2 gas plus of o2 gas giving h2o minus 68.3 okay well this also water is also in liquid phase c then we have d where c which is graphite graphite carbon plus of o2 which is in gas phase so this is solid graphite carbon is in solid phase giving co2 which is again gaseous phase with value of minus 94.05 is the delta h value okay so what is the standard heat of formation of propylene is a question i repeat the question the following enthalpy changes are known from the experiments for the reactions given below at 25 degree standard conditions okay calculate the standard heat of formation of propylene how we write the standard heat of formation from its basic elements what is the basic element mean it has c and h so c plus h giving Uh, C3H6. After balancing it, we will write what is the delta H of the that particular reaction by adding, subtracting, multiplying uh, these A, B, C, and D. We will able to get the answer. Okay, let's see how we are able to get that. For example, propylene is acetate. Prop refers to three, and lean refers to C N H two N. so you can write c3h6 is the propylene remember in exam i am going to get, ask some higher elements also okay so that's why i am giving you how to get that formula first so propylene is c3h6 and it has to be formed right from its basic elements carbon graphite carbon plus h c plus h2 gives ch c3h6 mean how to balance it we are going to have three carbon this is in solid phase gas phase and again in gas phase so if you balance it it is three carbon plus three h2 gives c3h6 and what is the delta h is the question right heat of formation of the reaction so this in the formation in the delta h is obviously written with f subscript referring to heat of formation okay now how will you do this so for that again we have to go back to the question label this equation as a b c and d and just follow what i am doing so we have to either as i said now forward reaction or reverse reaction you have to consider so that when you balance the equation finally we should able to get this equation okay so So this should be the overall reaction. So from the given from the given equations, from the given set of reactions, we will be able to do that. Okay. So how we will be able to do that? We can do like this. Okay. 
we need carbon and hydrogen in the left hand side right oxygen should get balanced because in the final equation oxygen should not be there co2 also should not be there right what should not be there we should be clear okay so what we will do is you can do it in your own way i am telling you just one of the method to get it okay so what we will do is we will add a and b a plus b we will get on equation label it as e okay so that is first step second what you do is 4 times c plus 3 times d multiply the equation reaction 4 by 3 c by 4 times uh, c by 4 multiply equation d by 3 then add it so we are going to get an equation let it be f okay then subtract this f by e f minus e you are going to get an equation g and that is you are going to be your propylene formation so remember when you are multiplying any say for example i have a plus b giving c with delta h value some value okay some x when i multiply by 4 this equation now what i get is 4a plus 4b giving 4 times c means your delta h for this equation will become 4x so that is important thing we should keep in mind when you are doing this type of numericals okay when you are multiplying by 4 you are saying multiply by 4 this equation reaction a plus b giving c with delta h equal to x when i multiplying throughout i will be multiplying this delta h also by 4 times so the delta h for 4 moles of this like that we will be getting okay so that is important so once you take care of that we will able to get the answer okay so please carry out that so what i said first thing to do second thing third thing okay so once you do that you will get the answer directly otherwise by randomly you can add subtract multiply divide to get the answer okay so what is the first equation we get c3h6 plus h2 giving c3h8 that is equation number 1 what is equation number b second equation is c3 h8 plus 5o2 giving 3 co2 plus 4 h2 okay so when i add this equation what i get is balance it whatever is there in the right hand side you will get cancelled right c3h8 i repeat we are cancelling out equal number of moles is there means you will cancel c3h8 in the left this is your left hand side this is your right hand side okay c3h8 c3h8 get cancelled okay anything else getting cancelled then you have delta h also no we'll let us write that 29.6 We have minus five thirty point six. So this is mere addition, right? So this plus this equation A plus B, A plus B only we are writing. So this simple uh, addition. So we are going to get minus five sixty point two as the delta H for this step. What is this? We will write that. Okay. So what we have is C three H six plus H two. Plus five O two, giving three C O two plus four H two, which this much is it. So as I said, this is going to be your equation number E, reaction number E. Okay. Then coming to the second step. Second step is I said multi four into four times C. What is C? This H two plus R four to giving H two O is the C, right? 
when you multiply by 4 throughout 4 times h2 plus half of o2 is there so 4 into half it is 2 o2 giving 4 times h2o with delta h value 4 times multiplied by given value that is given value is minus 68.3 okay similarly what is that equation another equation is 3 times d 3 times d what is the given equation graphite carbon plus oxygen giving co2 3 times c means why i am saying 3 times here we are having 3 times co2 okay so here 4 times water is there that is the reason we want to form this 4 times water here okay we will see that hmm. so 3 times carbon plus 3 times o2 giving 3 times CO2. So you have delta H is equal to 3 times what is the value given in the table? Minus 94.05. So what, what we have to do? Second step I told 4 times C into 3 times D we will get an equation which is going to be F. Okay. So what is the equation F is delta H you know that. It is 4 times, I told you, 4 times C plus 3 times D. Okay, so this is going to be plus. So, plus this value. Okay, so what is your delta H value? 4 times minus 68.3 plus 3 times minus 94.05. You are going to get a value around minus... How much? This is around minus 273. This is around minus 292. Right? You write with the two digits decimals also. I am just writing round the figures. Okay. So this summation gives us minus triple five point three five equation F. Okay, what is this one? Anything getting cancelled, you can cancel. If not, we will write everything. Here nothing gets cancelled, so we will write to overall. That is 3 plus 2, 5 oxygen. Okay, so 4 H2 plus 5 oxygen plus 3 carbon, graphic carbon gives 4 H2 plus 3 CO2. Okay. Now, E minus F gives us the final expression I told you, right? What is that E minus F? C3H6. Shall I write F minus E? Yeah, F minus E gives me the final expression. So, F minus e so what is f i am writing it again for the sake of next slide you can continue writing there f4 h2 plus 5 oxygen plus 3 carbon giving 4 h2 o plus 3 co2 okay with delta h value of minus triple five point three five okay with kilocalories this is F equation and E equation is what is what is our E equation? It is C three H six minus minus of E, right? F is as it is minus of E means I'll write minus H two minus five O two giving minus 3CO2 minus 4H2O. Other way of writing is when I say minus E, it is reverse of this equation. Okay, that is 3CO2 plus 4H2O giving C3H6 plus H2 plus 5O2. 
So in that case, this delta H for this equation is earlier we wrote delta H of this one is minus 560.2. When I am reversing the reaction, so this delta H is equal to plus 560.2. Okay. So now can we balance this? Now Okay, so now we have written in this fashion. Uh, minus E means reverse of the reaction, right? So, I, what you can do is, why I wrote this, I can easily cancel here. 3CO2, 3CO2, 4H2O, 4H2O. Okay, so you have 5 oxygen, 5 oxygen. Okay, some C is missing. We have 4 H2 and we have 1 H2 in the right hand side. So how many H2 will be there in the left hand side then? We are going to have 3 H2 in the left hand side. Okay. So this is 1. We are going to have 3. Okay. So then it is left out 3 C. Okay. 3 C plus 3 H2 giving 1 mole of C3 H6. Okay. So this difference is your delta H value. Delta H is because we are doing this already we have changed the sign. So the difference 560 minus 555. How much it is? 4.85 kilocalories is the delta H of formation. Okay, it is a heat of formation of propylene. See, in exam for any other element, you should be able to solve this problem. Okay. And another thing is, we have done it at standard conditions. So, to take into account of effect of temperature. So, already we did a problem for Cp equal to A plus Bt, right? So, it can be of a higher order also. Bt plus Ct square is there. How to integrate, we should know. Okay, similarly, delta H at 25 degrees Celsius is known. Okay, we can always determine this, right? At delta H of 25, whatever is the operating temperature is given, we should be able to bring it down to this temp delta H of 25 degrees Celsius. So that way, the enthalpy of the reactant, and this is how much temperature is required to bring it down to 25 degrees Celsius. Then you have delta H of the reaction. Then product is formed at 25 degrees Celsius. Okay. So what is the temperature required to heat that product to the given temperature? So based on that, you will be able to get the delta H values. Okay. So that effect of temperature for any delta H can be calculated even if it is delta H or delta H. Okay. Or delta S or Cp values. We should be able to get the effect of temperature, which is given by delta H is equal to at any temperature T is given by delta H is 298 Kelvin plus 298 Kelvin to T CPDT. Similarly, entropy value also is given by delta S is 298 Kelvin plus 298 to given temperature Cp by T DT. This you should know. Okay, and Cp value is A plus Bt plus Ct square like that, etc. can be there. Any simplified form and this A value, B value and C value will be given for this Cp. Okay, so we are going to make use of hydrogen oxygen fuel cells, right? So if H2O to H2O is for Cp value, okay, values of A, B, and C is given by 28.914, minus 0 
जीरो पॉइंट डबल जीरो एट फोर जीरो पॉइंट जीरो वन टू नाइन एट जीरो पॉइंट डबल जीरो नाइन सिक्स सी वैल्यूज टू पॉइंट जीरो वन इंटू टेन पावर माइनस सिक्स माइनस थ्री पॉइंट नाइन इंटू टेन पावर माइनस सिक्स वन पॉइंट वन एट इंटू टेन पावर माइनस सिक्स okay now we should able to calculate the efficiency theoretical maximum possible efficiency of a fuel cell for a for an hydrogen oxygen fuel cell at 25 degree celsius delta g is given by minus 237191 kilojoules per kilo mole And delta H is given by minus two eight five eight three kilojoules per kilo mole. Then what is the efficiency? Determine the efficiency of the fuel cell. Efficiency of the fuel cell. Determine the efficiency of a Fuel cell. Okay, so what is the solution? Simple. So the efficiency of the fuel cell is given by delta G by delta H. Okay, so you have the values. Substitute and tell me the percentage. Okay. So the efficiency percentage, efficiency maximum efficiency, you can say. Okay, so eta max, eta max value is equal to this much percentage. Okay, please comment your answer. Okay. So what does it mean? This is your efficiency means what? That this percentage is the efficiency means if it is x, no, then one minus x percentage. What happened to that one minus x? Example, for example, if it is around eighty or ninety or seventy-five, whatever is the value here exactly, you will calculate. For example, let me say eighty-five. The remaining fifteen percentage. If it is seventy-five, it is twenty-five. If it is eighty-five, it is fifteen. It is ninety-five. It is five. Right. So what is this? This is the amount of enthalpy. Which is liberated as heat. So actual cell would produce more heat than this heat. So ideal conditions, we are going to have this much amount of uh, enthalpy is liberated as the heat. Whatever is the enthalpy available, uh, around seventeen percentage enthalpy is liberated as the heat. So for an ideal fuel cell, for actual conditions, we are going to have much more. Heat. Okay, so how will you overcome this one? How to reduce it? Because as I said, theoretically, this much percentage is lost. Okay, let me say the value seventeen percentage. Theoretically, seventy percentage is lost means so actual loss in the operation of the fuel cell. Will be greater than the seventeen percentage, right? Whatever is your x value, one minus x value. So I am assuming x equal to some eighty three or something. I am writing this. Okay. So you verify with your answer. So how to avoid this excess temperature rise? How to avoid excessive temperature rise? How will you overcome this? We have to because we want to operate at a particular temperature, right? Isothermal condition. So, how will you maintain the temperature if the, this much amount of heat is lost? We have to do some of the things. One is 
by passing excessive air when we are passing excessive air because that amount of heat is used to heat that air entering the system they get rise in temperature right so that air is heated so excess heat is made that heat excess heat is generated whatever heat is generated when we are sending some excess air that is not taking part in the reaction but what they are doing they are collecting the heat and leaving the system without participating in the reaction remember obviously the pumping cost is going to be more volume required is going to go on that is another way okay another thing is we can circulate cooling water or electrolyte through the external coolers circulate electrolyte through the external coolers right what you have a system we have electrolyte if it is liquid electrolyte okay so we withdraw some portion of the electrolyte and we take it out we allow it to pass through some cooling jacket then it is taken back okay that is one way okay another thing is if it is bipolar plates okay so if it is a membrane field cell so such heat can be taken away by bipolar plates where we have within the bipolar plates a cooling water being circulated okay so that way we are taking care of avoiding the excessive heat build up in the system okay now this what is the theoretical em of generated what is the theoretical em of generated it can be given by here itself so we calculated efficiency of the fuel cell what is that if b part is what is the theoretical em of generated in a fuel cell so uh, what is that we talked about the efficiency okay eta is equal to delta g by delta h we got it right so here how we get the theoretical em of generated em of reversible or em of of the cell is given by remember delta g is equal to minus n of e i told you already delta g equal to minus n of e or uh, e reversible or e of the cell so rearranging what we have is e reversible is equal to delta g by minus n of or minus can be numerator wherever you want where n is the number of electrons involved in the reaction f is the faraday constant okay so what is the value can you calculate and tell me so we have delta g value is equal to we have calculated the delta g is given right minus 237191 kilojoules per gram mole okay n value is equal to it is a two electrons number of electrons involved in h2 is what is that 2h plus plus two electrons is passing right so that is a two electron reaction for h2 hydrogen fuel cell f value we know 96500 coulomb per gram mole okay so we can find out the potential of the cell theoretical potential that is possible potential in volts what is the theoretical this is the theoretical potential okay so the theoretical potential possible is equal to e equal to minus delta g by nf so we have minus 237191 divided by so remember minus into minus plus uh, divided by 2 into 96500 so what you get is the voltage remember let it be some j j voltage please comment the value of j okay so we have j value what is the theoretical potential so that way this is at 25 degree celsius 
E at 25 degree Celsius. So when you want to calculate the same at 200 degree Celsius, obviously you are going to get some K voltage and this J is greater than K. That means what your value will decrease with increase in temperature. So this is your theoretical voltage. Okay. So actual voltage will be always less than the theoretical voltage due to polarization. And we have seen three types of polarization under the topic of VI characteristics. So higher the polarization, less is the voltage and less is the efficiency. Okay, so that's why we have to minimize this type of polarization, all the type of polarization which we have discussed in detail. Okay. Now, if delta S value is given, how to get this value, delta S value? Delta S value at any temperature T is given by delta S as 298 plus 298 to T Cp by T dt, right? So which is given by delta S at the temperature equal to Delta S as 298 plus Delta A ln of T by 298. This integration you can do separately. Plus Delta B into T minus 298 plus Delta C into T square minus 298 by 2. Where Delta A is equal to summation of A of products minus summation of A of reactants. Summation of A of reactants. Same way. Okay. So that means what? Anything it is same. For B also same, C also same. So what is that? A is equal to delta A is equal to A of product means A of water minus A of hydrogen minus half into A of oxygen. Similarly, delta B is equal to B of water minus B of hydrogen minus half into B of oxygen. Delta C is given by C of water minus C of hydrogen minus half into C of oxygen. Okay. Now, now we have a table with values because we, if you consider hydrogen, oxygen, fuel cell, I'll have the values. So you have H2, oxygen and water. Okay, whether it is whatever may be the phase, A value is given, B value is given, and C value is given. So A value is 28.914, 25.845, B value is minus 0084 plus 0 0.01298 remember to use proper symbol plus or minus whatever okay 0 0.00962 c values are 2.01 into 10 power minus 6 minus 3.9 into 10 power minus 6 1.18 into 10 power minus 6 to avoid confusion i have written 10 power minus 6 here usually how it will be given is c into 10 power 6 2.01 minus 3.9 1.18 
okay so what does it mean c into 10 power 6 is equal to 2.01 therefore c is equal to 2.01 into 10 power minus 6 simple thing i'm just reiterating because in exam we should not forget that when table is given in this fashion because to write it shortly we will be writing like this okay and similarly delta h value at any temperature is delta h at 25 degree celsius plus integral cpdt from 298 kelvin to any given temperature okay so obviously for that also we are going to have a table like this okay delta a delta v delta c value mcp delta t no so that also we have an expression okay which is given by delta h 298 plus delta a into t minus 298 it simple formula anyhow you can integrate any time and get the equation as a chemical engineer for non chemical engineering students we write, write it in this fashion okay okay so this way this delta h value can be calculated okay so any fuel cell operating at a theoretical efficiency will produce no current and therefore it will be of no practical value okay and if you look at the effect of pressure we will write the nernst equation okay nernst equation is given by delta g equal to delta g not plus rt ln of pc by p not power m pd by p not power n pa by p not power j pb by p not power k what is that jk m1 that is the stoichiometric reaction so if you consider a reaction psychometric reaction of j moles of a reacts with k moles of b to form m moles of c plus n moles of d okay so if d if delta g for a reaction is given by g equal to so in general where we start is g equal to g not plus rt ln of p by p not where from we get it we have dg equal to rt dp by p okay from that we will able to get this from this to this so from this we will able to get this one okay so this equation upon simplification we have this equation which is your p not is your standard pressure okay that is p not is your one atmosphere T naught is your 25 degree Celsius, and G naught is G at 25 degree Celsius. Okay. So this is delta G value, and what is the? Can you write? Please take down this question. Write the Nernst equation. H2O2 fuel cell for gaseous water product produce product that is water vapor product so can we write it we have to write it in terms of product see remember this is the general equation and this is the general equation with uh, when two reactant and two products are formed for H2O2 we know what is the reaction H2 plus of O2 giving h2o okay so for this can you write uh, the nernst equation in simplified form obviously we can write it right so how we will write we have delta g is equal to delta g not plus rt ln of so we are going to have h2o is the product here we are having 
hydrogen and we have raised to the power of the mole fraction right so this is one one mole one mole here it is 0.5 mole so that's why for oxygen we will be writing power 0.5 we should know that because here it is half okay p not power half so this is power 1 this is power 1 okay so if we write it correctly so the if delta g is this then what is e e is nothing but minus delta g by nf right so let it be equation number 2 let it be equation number 1 substitute 1 into what we get 1 into what we get is e equal to minus delta g not by nf minus rt by nf into ln of p h2 p of h2 p o2 power 0.5 okay so what we can write is then e, this is nothing but we know that e equal to e not is equal to minus nf uh, sorry g not is equal to minus nf e not so e not can be written as g not by minus nf right so we can write it as e not then this can be reversed uh, if to reverse it we can put plus rt by nf ph2 into po2 power 0.5 divided by ph2 so this is our non stick equation okay so we should write when we write this where e not is equal to delta g not by minus n of okay so this is at 25 degree celsius okay that is e not at 25 degree celsius that's what it means right so remember when liquid water is produced second case when liquid water is produced what are, what is the value of this water partial pressure of water will become 1 okay so what we get to know from this nernst equation is what we come to know from this nernst equation is one higher the pressure what will be the value of cell potential cell potential is dash comment your answer whether it is high or less higher the pressure cell potential is high or low please answer similarly if the concentration of of the reactants that is your hydrogen and oxygen are diluted if the concentration of the reactants are diluted as partial pressure is directly proportional to their concentration what will happen to the cell potential so that is another question if the concentration of the reactions are diluted diluted what will happen to the cell potential the cell potential will become low or high answer your question answer your choice it will be higher or lower okay see you for first case what is the thing higher the pressure the cell potential is will be higher 
when the concentration is diluted the cell potential will become lower okay for example when you talk about this dilution instead of using pure oxygen partial pressure of oxygen is there right in place of pure oxygen if it is replaced by air the concentration what happens in air we know that nitrogen is 79 mole percent oxygen is 21 mole percent so that means instead of 100 percent it is becoming 0.21 times right so that way this partial pressure will term will be change it will have an impact in the cell voltage okay so in place of oxygen when you are want to use air obviously we are going to have a different thing for example let me write e equal to rt by nf ln of po2 power minus 0.5 p over to power 0.5 okay then you have another case where rt by nf ln of p of r power 0.5 okay so with other terms being the same when you use uh, when oxygen is used when air is used what is the difference we can see okay so then we can say delta e not minus delta e not of air e when oxygen is used e when air is used okay so when it with the remaining terms being the same what we get is rt by nf into ln of p of oxygen power 0.5 by p of air Over point five. Okay, so there is a change, obviously, right? In the term, we are having to have this thing. So, can you calculate the voltage loss or gain at eighty degree Celsius? Or it will happen like that. We will able to solve the numericals. Okay. Okay. So we can solve the numerical. At twenty-five degrees Celsius, calculate the electrical energy delta G and heat produced if the water H two O is in the product. Okay, so what we'll do? We have a table of enthalpy and entropy of formations of fuel cells, reactants, and products at twenty-five degrees Celsius and one atmosphere. So we have a table here. We will make use of them to determine the delta S value. Okay. Similarly, we'll get the delta G value also. Okay. <laughs> so that is the theoretical electrical work done and we can get the heat produced or heat evolved in the exothermic reaction right how much heat is evolved is given by delta h minus delta g which is around 48.68 kilojoules per mole okay well in this lecture